Hey, game makers! You want more tips and tricks? Well, apparently. This is the third installment of our RM Tips and Tricks series. As usual, we'll be looking at some awesome, yet simple, RPG Maker tips and tricks I've discovered over the years. Most of these will be things I think are cool, practical, useful to know, or general game making advice. Let's talk quick event creation. This is a feature that lets you right click a tile and easily create a transfer, door, treasure, or inn. Now these are super great and super duper handy, and when I found them I was like, what a great feature! But I was wrong. There's a downfall, a huge one. Everyone uses them. And you might think, but dude, it's just a door and some treasure boxes and stuff. True, but wouldn't you like your game to stand out? Instead of just fading the screen when you go to an area, wouldn't you like it to maybe zoom in a bit, change the screen tone, or maybe have a different transition for wherever you happen to be going? The quick event creations are meant for a very basic use, and that's fine. But you don't need to stick to these for your game. Now, if you could customize the events these create, that would be amazing, but no. Seriously, MB, why is this not a thing yet? While on the topic of events, did you know you can hit the space bar and instantly edit event commands? And legit, I can't make this sound like I didn't just figure it out two weeks ago. Remember tents? That item in the ye olde Final Fantasies that healed you on world maps and save points? Well, to make a super simple one, all we need to do is create a tent item, have consumable on yes, and occasion set to menu screen. In the effects, call a common event. In said common event, we'll have a conditional branch set up to check if a switch is on. We'll switch this switch on when we enter a world map or on a save point, and then turn it off when we leave those locations. If the switch is on and we can use the tent, we're just simply going to gather the followers, change our player to a tent graphic, and just pretend this is a tent. <laughs> then fade the screen out, play the sleepy music effect, wait a handful of frames for the sound to stop, and then change your player's graphic back to normal, fade the screen in, and heal at some point. Then just else, if we can't use the tent, we'll just have it tell us we can't use it, and re-add a tent item to the inventory since it decreased when we used it. Alternatively, there's probably or will probably be a plugin that lets you gray out items when you're not supposed to use them, so that could work here too. You might have seen some videos where people's plugins look like they're broken up into groups with dividing lines. To do this, simply open up something like Notepad and save it. Call it uh, a bunch of equals? <laughs> or whatever you want the dividing line to look like. .js. Now just copy it into your game's JS slash plugins folder and select it in the plugins manager. Be consistent with your game design. Things are likely going to change in the development of your game and that's totally fine and definitely normal. But any core aspects of your mechanics, or overall how the game is played, needs to be introduced to the player as soon as possible. An example I like is, in the first area of a game, I'll look around and click on the first things I see. If bookshelves, dressers, random objects lying around and such don't say anything, it basically tells the player I must not be able to click on things in this game. And so, even if every single one of your feature maps has tons of clickables on them, the player likely won't bother because the first area showed me I didn't need to. Another example I like actually comes from the Pokemon franchise. In the first handful of games, you could talk to trash cans and sometimes find items in them. Since then, it seems as though they've been progressively retconning that out. As in the recent games, when you talk to them, you usually just get the standard it's empty jargon, which is irritating to the older players who like going through trash cans, for some reason, and expect to be rewarded for it. Remember the repel item tutorial I did a while back? There's actually a simpler way to do a keep the monsters away item. Go to armor in the database, have it set in an accessory or something, and have the trait set to party ability encounter none. But what's important to note here is that these are two very different game mechanics. As an equipable item, it's a one-time thing. You give it to the player, and they can now disable encounters whenever they feel like it. This becomes dangerous if you give it to the player too early, as they might leave it on forever and get incredibly underleveled. If you break up the party, the team without it is at a disadvantage. Unless you give the player another one, but then it's like, well, I already have one, why do I need two just for this area? Now, as a reusable item, this means you can reward the player with them. They could find them in treasure chests so you can control how many they're allowed to have, or you could start selling them so the player has a use for all that money they're picking up. As for an X amount of steps counter, this will prompt the player to remember that, hey, I'm using a repel and give them a chance to consider if they need to level or not. Additionally, something like this can be upgraded to longer lasting ones, which is even more of a reward to give to the player. 
The basic idea is to set up things in your game to reward the player for using the mechanic. On the topic of mechanics, in terms of plugins and features, when thinking about what you should use, keep this bit of advice in mind. Your game mechanics should help your game and fit your game, but not hinder it. The mechanics should fit into your game, its world, and story, not just be there tacked on because we well, look, more features, yay! What if the original Super Mario Bros. had an in-depth quest system? What if the early 2D Final Fantasies used an action battle system instead? What if Zelda was a turn-based RPG? These would be complete game changers on all accounts, and we would have ended up with completely different games. So here are some things to think about when looking to use a certain mechanic. Does this fit the world I want to portray? Does this fit the game I want to show? Does this make sense to use for the story and characters I'm trying to get across? And most importantly, will this add to the experience I want to create? An interesting example, actually, is in the game Bravely Default, and one of its demos that was available before its release. Amazing game, by the way. But anyway, the demo of the game was presented as a quest-based, go here, do a quest, get a reward game. Now, the demo kept me entertained enough to still buy it, but I knew nothing about the game and assumed it would be quest-based since the demo was. And suddenly I get the game and you know what the quest system was used for? A bloody tutorial checklist! And that was totally fine, because the game didn't need a quest system. As useful as it was for the demo, the game itself wouldn't really have mixed with that sort of quest system. It would have been distracting, if anything. So keep the game you're envisioning in mind when wandering through lists and lists of plugins. Speaking of plugins, here are a handful of plugin demos that are completely amazing. Every single line of dialogue is important. There's a lot I'd love to go over here, but I'll just point out some generic points for the time being. When writing characters, how would they talk? Every character, like every person, has their own way of talking, their own speech patterns, catchphrases, and overall personality. This should be reflected in every line of dialogue they say. For example, take a look at this scene. I've written the characters as super bland and general as I possibly could. Now look at this one, where the character's dialogue closer reflects their intended personalities. Another point is, if you can use less text and still explain something properly, you should. There are text-heavy games, and that's totally fine if it's the type of game you're going for, but it doesn't need to be longer than it needs to be. If you feel like a scene is dragging on, go back and see if you can revise it a bit. Specifically, see if you can remove any throwaway lines. Basically, segments of dialogue that have nothing to do with the plot, the world, the characters, or are just generally there to fill space. Last dialogue note, make flavor text interesting. Oh, I got a copper sword. I wonder what it does. Oh, it's a copper sword. Yay me. <laughs> Additionally, for any complicated skill descriptions, try to keep them as simple as you can. The last thing you want to happen is for the player to get a new skill, go to use it, and not understand exactly what it does. I've been prone to do this from time to time. All games are flawed. Absolutely no game is or ever will be perfect. There will always be that one area, that one decision, that one character, or that one mechanic that somebody is going to have a problem with. And you know what? That's totally okay. People have different opinions about games and the things they like to see in them. Even mainstream games suffer from flaws. And they've got massive teams working on some of those. You 
you have you, and maybe a small group from the RM community in some cases. So do your best to make your game the way you want to. The people who like it will like it, and the people who won't, won't. And that's okay. If you'd like yet another more tips and tricks video, let me know in the comments. I've also been considering doing tips and advice videos about world building, character storytelling, and such, in addition to my normal tutorials. So if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts about the actual game creating side of things, let me know! Until next time, see you later gamers!